Whether you're a tabletop simulator veteran looking to make the most of your Steam Deck, or you've even used it before and you simply want to play Warhammer on your PC, this guide has got you covered. Warhammer is an awesome game, but sometimes you just don't have the time to grab all your figures, meet up with all your friends, and get everything set up as well as play it. The next best thing is playing it on your PC with Tabletop Simulator. Well, that's what I thought until recently, but then I decided to give it a go on my Steam Deck. And with a bit of tweaking, I was really pleasantly surprised with how well it worked and just how convenient it is. Got a half hour lunch break, whip out your Steam Deck, do a turn, save it, job done. That's probably not gonna happen. This is gonna be a lengthy but comprehensive tutorial. And if you want more Steam Deck tutorials or you just wanna help support a fellow Warhammer player, please subscribe to the channel share the video with your friends and give it a like. Step one, it's obvious you need to buy a tabletop simulator and install it. So this is going to be the only thing you need to purchase for this tutorial. You can usually pick it up for about 10 to 15 pounds on Steam or you can potentially purchase a key of something like G2A for a couple of pounds at your own risk. So get that bought, get that installed and then move on to step two. The first proper step is to head into Steam, find Tabletop Simulator, and then head into the workshop. Using the search function, you're going to need to try and find this Warhammer 40k 10th setup, and then add it to your collection. Type in something like this to find it. This is basically the add-on that you're going to need, which is going to have all the dice, counters, just nearly everything you need to play. So there are two things that the previous add-on doesn't include and the first one of those is the maps. So we're going to need to find them. Now there's a ton on Tabletop Simulator but the most useful ones are going to be the official tournament layouts. Now if you're not planning on playing competitively it doesn't really matter which ones you get but the UK tends to use ITC layouts whereas the US tends to use Games Workshop layouts. So just get whichever ones you need. Now the other thing that doesn't come with this add-on is the miniatures. This is the hardest thing to get. In an ideal world, Games Workshop would supply every model with a nice code you could put into Tabletop Simulator, which puts your model into it. Until that day comes, we've got to use mods. To get the miniatures, you'll need to log into Steam via a web browser, rather than going via the workshop in the Steam app. Once in there, search for Force Org, all one word, in the workshop, and then add that to your subscription. The next step is the controls. If you're playing with a mouse and keyboard, so on a PC or a mouse and keyboard hooked up to your Steam Deck, feel free to skip this step. But if you're playing on the Steam Deck, this step is pretty essential. If you're playing with just a normal controller, God help you. The bug standard controls that Steam Deck assigns for this make it unplayable, so we're gonna to need to configure them. You can go into TTS itself and set the controls to controller mode, but good luck to those of you who wish to try those. So first off, we're gonna to need to change a few controls in Tabletop Simulator itself. Open up Tabletop Simulator and head to the menu then configuration, then controls. There are just two that we need to change in here. Firstly, click on zoom out and tap up on the D-pad. Then for zoom in, tap down on the D-pad. Now for the rest of the controls, we need to go into the Steam Deck settings themselves. Hit the Steam button, head into controls and click on the arrow and head to community layouts. My layout has been uploaded as TGA's deck layout. So I search for that and then apply it. In terms of how these controls work, the right trackpad is gonna work as your mouse with triggers as left click and right click. As you'd expect if you've ever played a game before, the right thumbstick rotates the camera and the left one moves it around. 
Up and down on the D-pad will zoom in and out, whilst left and right on the D-pad rotate the pieces. To flip a piece, it's the left bumper. These should pretty much see you through, but you can always bring up more controls with the left trigger menu in game and map any that you feel that you use a lot. An alternative control scheme that I personally prefer basically uses winding the right stick as zooming in and out, and you just rotate the camera by dragging. I feel this gives me a bit more precise controls and it's what I started with, so anything else hurts my brain. Now that everything is configured, we can jump into Tabletop Simulator and we're going to gather our army. When you load up Tabletop Simulator for the first time, it should import all the workshop items we subscribe to. If you did the last step, you'll have already done this. If you didn't, you might have to wait a few minutes or however long just for all these stuff to get uploaded. The first one we need to use is the Force Org one. So head to Start New Single Player Game and find Force Org in your list. Once it's loaded, find the faction you want to make an army from. Maneuver around using the thumbsticks, and then using the right trackpad, put the cursor on load models for the army, and then press the right trigger. You might need to zoom in a little bit to find this. Just a reminder, this is with up and down on the D-pad. Once all the models are loaded, either delete all the ones that you don't want, and of course, that you don't physically own because we're not savages, or just highlight all the ones that you do want. Right click and select save object as, and then name it something like whatever your arm is called or whatever detachment you're using. Now when you want to make a 2000 point list or whatever battle size you're playing, you can just load these objects up, highlight the ones in your list that you want and save them as an object again as something like my current 2000 point sisters list. As you can see, I've got a bunch now in my saved objects. We've got everything we need to play. Okay, so now it's time to bring it all together. Select the Warhammer 40k 10th as the game. This one. It'll give the option to pick red or blue team, so pick whichever you want, and then you're in. Next, click on Confirm for Gaming, assuming that this is the battle size map that you want. The next thing we need to do is load the map. At the moment, there isn't one. So, head up to Games. And then click on whichever map you want but click on the three dots at the top and then click additive load. Click on load and that'll import the map. Then you want to add your army, so head to objects, save objects and pick whichever one is your army and then just click those down wherever you want to put them. Now we just need to confirm the terrain and now you've got everything you need to play. So the final step is just is just how to play. So I'm not going to give you a tutorial on how to play Warhammer itself, that'll take hours. Give me a few hundred and a super chat and we'll talk. What I'm going to show you now is how to functionally use all this setup. So the first part of the game is to select your mission. So if you head up to this section of the table and choose either Leviathan missions or the new Prior Nexus missions, When choosing the missions, you've got the option of either using the random one from the Games Workshop official layouts, or selecting fully random. Click on whichever of those, and it will give you your deployment, mission rule, and your primary objectives. Head down to select deployment zones, and click on the arrow to find the one that you've just drawn. So this one is the Prime Nexus Hammer and Anvil. 
If you just zoom out a little, you'll see that there's now a red line and a green line marking off the deployment zones. The next thing you need to do is sort out the secondaries. So you'll see here there's a bunch of them at the bottom of your screen. If you're taking tactical, you just need to flip over the two tactical ones. If you're taking fixed, just flip over whichever two fixed ones you're taking. Then head to this area of your board and you'll see a little button that basically just says lock in, uh, lock in secondaries. Click on that and the cards will disappear from the bottom to confirm that you've done that. So next up, you need to declare what's in transports, reserves and strategic reserves. There's a handy little area for this. The reserve section is a bit small for stuff like demons, but they don't have transports, so I usually just fill the rest. It doesn't really matter though, it's just there to be helpful. The next step of the game is deployment, so firstly you need to do a roll off. So let's go over on how to roll the dice. The dice roller in this game is one of the best things about it, as it will dramatically speed up the games of Warhammer 40k. Head over to your map. All this area is your dice, and this little box here is a window, so you're able to see your opponent's dice rolls without having to move away from your dice area. The easiest way to roll the dice is just to do so using these buttons to select the number of dice you need. Obviously, for a roll of 1d6, you only need one. So for the deployment roll off, I'm just going to click on this. Then click on this section to roll the dice on your dice roller. It'll handily put the dice in the row for the number that you've rolled. This becomes really handy when you get to big dice rolls. Let's say we've got 20 attacks hitting on fours. So we clear the map by right clicking here. Click on the 10d6 twice but don't click too fast, otherwise the game will have a fit. Then, roll all the dice. Seeing as though we're just hitting on fours, you just delete everything that isn't a four. So you just need to right click on this little red area here, just next to the threes, which will delete everything from three and below. Roll again for the wound roll. And let's say we wound on fours, same again, right click on this area here. And as you can see in the bottom left corner, it tells you how many dice you've managed to wound with. Obviously with such a small amount of dice it's really easy to see but it comes in really handy when you're having to roll like a hundred dice. So the other handy thing with the dice is the white box which is basically re-rolls. So let's say for example you've got re-roll ones. After you roll you just left click on the white box and it'll re-roll the ones. If you need to do full re-rolls like something like twin linked Say you're wounding on fives, to reroll everything from four and below, you just right click on the white bit next to fours. Once you finish your deployment roll off, you then need to start deploying your units. Before you do that though, highlight all your units, right click, and then click on toggles. Then click on measure movement. Also, check on this measure ruler here and make sure that it's set to inches. This basically means that whenever you move a unit, it'll automatically show you how far it's moving, which again, speeds things up quite a lot. Another useful tip for when moving your units, if you hold down the left trigger and right trigger at the same time, it'll drag them across the floor. So that's pretty useful for when you want to get into base-to-base -base contact with something and you can push it all the way up to it. Once you've finished deploying and after you've done your first turn roll off, select which player is going to go first and then just click on start game. This will then keep track of whose turn it is and what stage you're in. It's pretty helpful if you're going to be playing over a long period of time rather than all in one game. Usually I'm playing in one game so I tend to not bother with it. So a few other things around on the board. You've got your, your points counter, your command points. These buttons show different areas of the board such as things like investigate signals and area denial. In the top right, we've got a bunch of useful markers. Quite handy just to drop these on your units just as a reminder of what they do. Uh, the most useful one though on the, on the left hand side is the Battleshock token. Lastly, at the other end of your map, just by the dice roller, are the wound markers. You pick these up, drop them where you want them, 
click on the top to either raise or lower the amount of wounds left with left or right mouse button. Hopefully everything else on the board is pretty self-explanatory. There are a few issues I've come across with TTS on Steam Deck. Most notably, it never seems to want to go back to the main menu. I can load games from within games, but usually I have to close it down completely to get to the main menu. But for the most part, it's been a relatively painless experience. As always, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this video has been helpful. Don't forget to like the video and most importantly, subscribe to the channel to help support it and enable me to keep making more content. Let me know how you got on in the comments and hopefully I'll catch you next time.